example, in a cartoon form. This is the first evidence for lymphatics uh, in the intracranial structures. Also, we learned about a glymphatic or fluid flowing system that percolates through the interstitial space that, for example, is clearing things like beta amyloid and unwanted metabolites. These are all new concepts. But they deal mainly with the meninges and the interaction with tissues below. Fanny Harrison in my laboratory was interested in what about the interaction between the meninges and the tissues that sit above it. And so in this paper in Nature Neuroscience, published in November of this year, she identified for the first time direct vascular channels that connect skull bone marrow and the brain surface, enabling myeloid or white cell migration. I'm not going to tell you how she went about it, but I, I want to show you uh, what the channels look like. So you can imagine, this is work done using confocal microscopy. You can imagine that this is the bone in the marrow cavity here, and you can see these tubular extensions. Just to give you a frame of reference, the blue is bone, the red are blood vessels. You can see them coming down to these channels. These are the channels. And they're moving in towards the dural surface and based on, actually there were four publications that came out since November of 2018. So this is a very hot topic and all of them came in Nature publications. Uh, Fanny validated this um, concept of microchannels using micro CT, here is shown in a mouse, and you can see this is the bone proper with the marrow inside and these uh, bone protected uh, tubules which contain blood vessels. So the meninges are constantly talking back and forth with the bone marrow, which we think is really quite important in migraine. And there is one disease that I just have a brief period of time to talk about, and it's completely unrelated to migraine in any way, but it tells you fundamental biology that deals with these microchannels and how important they can be in disease. In this case, it's acute lymphocytic leukemia. And this cartoon shows very nicely uh, the anatomy, as I was mentioning before, with the bone, the dura, the uh, CSF space, and the arachnoid, um, the piamata, and the brain. And what this group from Duke was interested in understanding was why the high occurrence rate of CNS complications in leukemia. And in particular, they were interested in why the meninges, as opposed to the parenchyma, was such a target for acute lymphocytic 